Oh, Marcus Conti reporting on this. Did I tell you that this was going to be the greatest election season ever? That shit was going to start to heat up and it was going to get really interesting with uh, Bernie Sanders, Bernie Sanders, and Donald Trump. Wow. The issues are on the table. The swords are coming out in this election. So Bernie Sanders did a, uh, a town hall last night. He went in front of the people with Wolf Blitzer on CNN asking the questions or moderating. And um, turns out a little bit of it was rigged. I'll point those things out. But how did Bernie Sanders do, right? Uh, Bernie Sanders is bringing the issues to the table, right? <clears throat> and that's, uh, that's what's most important, right? Now, wh- what, did he, uh, what was he good on? Green New Deal, let's give the, the good ones first, and then we'll talk about how he failed. Because I think he did, I think he did on, in many respects, and we'll talk about that. I'm going to play a lot of the clips. Uh, you know, I encourage you to watch the whole thing through on your own if you have time. I'm just going to give you the highlights and uh, see what happens. So Green New Deal, he's for. Uh, Medicare for All, 100%. He was 100% correct on it how you have to squeeze out the um, pharmaceutical industrial complex, 100%. Income and wealth inequality, that's what Bernie Sanders talks about all the time. He was 100% in rare form. Tax evasion on the uh, to enforce the tax evasion laws and uh, corporate aversion laws for large corporations. He was 100% on that. Free college um, at city and state universities. Is where he fails, right? 100% sheepdog. Right? He, he opens up. The first question, in the first question you're going to see, he's going to say, he's going to show you that no matter who is elected, who the Democrats bring forward, he's going to support them. So right there he fails. He's, that's a big failure. He still defends Russiagate, that the Russians uh, uh, rigged the election and not the DNC. He actually defends fake news that you're going to see. He clarifies on Venezuela, uh, which I, I, in my view, I've already clar- I mean, I feel like he's already clarified. He supports. Um, he he does, he's he's against regime change, so he makes he clarifies that. He's still calling Trump a racist and a a separator when the Democrats are really the separators. He he declares that Trump will never get his wall. Um, that the solution for immigration. Is not a wall, is a uh, immigration reform, which I know a lot of people disagree with that. And uh, he, there's not a, there wasn't a single mention of uh, gun control uh, in the whole in the whole uh, talk. So let's jump into this and see what's going on here. So here's the first uh, first question. And unfortunately, we can't focus only on the issues. We must get President Trump out of the White House before he does any more damage. If you are the Democratic nominee. How will you defeat him? And if you are not the nominee, what will you do to help the nominee defeat him? Well, let me just say two things. Number one, I hope and believe that every Democratic candidate will come together after the nominee is selected and make certain that Donald Trump is not reelected president of the United States. And I pledge certainly to do that. I hope I'm the nominee, but if I am not, I will work with that nominee. Trump has got to be defeated. And I'll tell you why. I don't want to hear why. The, f- the point is that Bernie Sanders right there declares that he is a sheepdog, that no matter when they stick the knife in his back, not if, because, all right, history repeats itself, right? They're going to fuck him, right? They're going to fuck him over, right? There's no doubt about it, right? History is, history is as history is, right? and they did it to him before, and they're going to do it again, and he just told you that he's going to turn over the reins to whoever the Democratic candidate is no matter what. Big, 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 uh, uh, you know. It's not only that we have a president who wanted to throw 32 million people off of the health care they had after promising that he would provide health care to everybody. It's not just a president who said he'd have a tax plan to benefit the middle class, but 83... He makes a lot of good points. I just want to show you the point that he fails, where he calls... Trump the divider. Watch. percent of the benefits go to the one percent. I'll tell you, it's not just a president who said to the working class of this country, I am on your side. I'm not going to cut Social Security, Medicare and Medicaid. And then he came forward with a budget trillion dollar cut 
to Medicaid, $500 billion to Medicare, and $72 billion to the Social Security Disability Fund. But there's something even deeper. Listen to this. This president is the first president in the modern history of our country who is trying to divide our people up based on the color of their skin, the country they were born in, their sexual orientation, their gender, their religion. And that is an outrage. Our job is to bring our people together, not to divide them up. That's why Mr. Trump must be defeated. See, now, that gives me the squinty lemon face. I, when, I, when he says that, I go, what? It's the Democrats. We all know that. The Democrats are doing the, the conquer and divide thing. They're the ones who cut and slice and say the blacks over here and the women over there and, and all this stuff, right? He's, it's the Democrat. It's his party, and he's blaming Trump. He's, still calling, he's basically still calling Trump a racist. It's a big mistake. Trump is not the divider. Trump, people are going to look at you and say, Bernie, you're fucking wrong. You just, you just got that, you got that whole shit totally fucking, totally backwards, Bernie. So there's where he fails. I'm, I'm focusing on the, 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 uh, unfortunately the failures where he falls short, uh, right? If you want to watch the whole thing, again, I gave you the ones that where he was spectacular, but I just want to talk about some of the falls. So here, here he goes into um, the obstacles. Let's call them that for Bernie Sanders. Let's talk about the tax evasion on the, on the corporations. It only goes to the very, very wealthiest people in this country. So what I believe that in a democratic, civilized society, health care, yeah, is a right. Making sure that our kids can get a higher education is a right. That we rebuild our crumbling infrastructure is a basic need. That's going to cost money. But at a time when the people on top have so much while the middle class shrinks and we have so many people living in poverty, if your question is, am I going to demand that the wealthy and large corporations start paying their fair share of taxes? Damn right, I will. All right? All right, I correct myself. I gave it. This is a positive. <laughs> and let me give you, you know, people say, where are you going to get the money? Where are you going to get the money? Amazon, owned by the wealthiest guy in the world made $5 billion last year in profits. Anyone here know how much they paid in taxes? Zero. That's Zero. right. That's where we're going to begin getting the money. But tax experts caution, and you know this, Senator. Uh, I'm going to cut Wolf Blitzer off because he's an idiot. He's just, oh, we got to listen more. He says more stuff. Tax experts caution that the rich will likely look for various ways to avoid paying these taxes. How will you ensure that the wealthy actually go ahead and pay these taxes? Well, that's what they do right now. Look, we got a, we have a, an economy today that works very well for the 1%. And what these guys do, and we have to deal with this, they stash billions and billions of dollars in profits in the Cayman Islands and other tax havens. And we have veterans sleeping out on the streets, public schools that are falling apart. Got 20% of senior citizens in this country trying to live on $13,500 or less. So we have, when I talk about a political revolution, I know this may sound, sound radical to some people, but we are gonna create an economy and a government that works for all of us, not just the 1%. So to answer your question, we are gonna do away with those outrageous loopholes that allow large corporations owned by some of the wealthiest people in this country to pay nothing in taxes. We're going to end their ability to put their money in the Cayman Islands under the tax havens. We have a question from... All right, so there you go. To get rid of... He said it. Get rid of the loopholes, the tax loopholes, to attack the tax loopholes. So he said it, right? He's now on the record as saying that. That was a, uh, that was a good positive. Go, go, Bernie, go, Bernie. Bernie gets a, uh, gets a pat on the back for that one. But man, he's, he's a sheepdog, man. You heard him say that shit. That's disappointing, Bernie. He disappointed me, Bernie. You're going to suck up to Hillary Clinton or fucking Camilla Harris? Jerk off. Dean, I think I will not shock anybody uh, to suggest that the DNC was not quite even-handed. I think we have... What? Wait, wait, wait. What did he say? What did he say? Hey, let's listen to it again. To suggest that the DNC was not quite even-handed. I think we have <laughs> come... Listen, in the let's house. Uh, for 16 years before that, to suggest that the DNC leadership in the United States Senate. I'm sorry. 
Uh, I've been well, I don't have a the Democratic finger. caucus in the Senate for the last 13 years. And He's going to talk about election rigging. Uh, for 16 years before that. Won the Democratic nomination in my state. Uh, but in Vermont, I've chosen to run as an independent because it goes way, way back. Listen to this. Uh, in, to answer your question, in 2016, I think I will not shock anybody uh, to suggest that the DNC was not quite even-handed. <laughs> I think we have come uh, a long way since then, uh, and uh, I fully expect to be treated. This is CNN failing. Watch. They sent out a bad stream. That's what I wanted to point out. Look. Nothing. It went dead. Blank. They are and now it comes back in. Independence. <laughs> uh, or not. That's CNN, right? You, Bernie, you're going to get a fair shake? Fucking CNN sticking it. It's rigged. They're sticking the knife in your back. All right, so they gave you some. They gave you some space, but essentially, when you start talking about election rigging, you see how CNN killed, it, knocked down the feed. Now, I, I looked at that across all the feeds that I could find, all the videos, and it seemed pretty consistent online that right when Bernie Sanders started to talk about uh, uh, election uh, rigging, uh, the suddenly everything, the whole, the whole shit goes blank. So here's, here's he talks about free college tuition. I'm, I'm giving a lot of positives. I'm sorry. Sure. That's how we do it. I know and you want to hate on that. Bernie, but fuck Now, it. I found it interesting it's that last point. year, uh, many of my conservative friends didn't bother to ask Donald Trump how he would pay for a trillion dollars in tax breaks to the 1% and private corporations. And if we can give a trillion dollars in tax breaks to people who don't need it, we can make public colleges and universities tuition-free all over this country. And that is a very high priority for me. So isn't that simple? I mean, that's just, you, could, you can't get it simple of that. You give, you give billionaires a trillion dollars in tax cuts that they don't need. They take the money, they stash it in the Cayman Islands, and then everybody cries, how are you going to pay for free, how are you going to pay for free college tuition at city and state universities, right? And he gives you, he gave you the answer. He gave you the answer on tax evasion, right, how to close the loopholes. I would up the ante on that and say that you, sh you need to lock people up. You need to, you need to make examples out of corporate mong mongers, you know, bankers that, that uh, evade tax, right? They break the law, they evade tax. You got to lock them up, right? You got to drag them up the stairs like they did with uh, Martha Stewart and make examples out of them, right? You have to do that, right? So uh, oh, here's a socialism smear. This is pretty good. Yeah, Katru, a nonprofit worker here in Washington. Listen to this. This is great. Senator Sanders, uh, can you make a simple persuasive case as to why socialism is preferable to capitalism? Democratic socialism, right? Yes. Okay. Okay. So he clarified, right? Again, the, the questions are, it, it, it's not random, right? The, the questions are, are picked, right? The girl's cute. She's, she's, she's honest. She's asking an honest question. She believes in her heart that socialism is better than capitalism, just to preface it, right? But the, the, the fact is the term socialism has been weaponized in this country, so she's smiling. Oh, look, socialism! And it, she, she's, she's stepping. She stepped into the. They're trying to put Bernie in the trap, basically. See, the kids want socialism, but it's and Bernie clarified democratic socialism. So let's now let's see how how the caption reads on CNN. Let's let me watch uh, this. Tell you what I mean by that, so we're clear. Watch right now. <laughs> Can you make a simple persuasive case why social socialism is preferable to capitalism? So it's a it's a leading question, right? Because we know Bernie is a democratic socialist who wants social programs, a social democrat, right? So now this will be this is what Fox will run with, right? That he prefers socialism over capitalism, right? But he's an FDR capitalist. That's what Bernie Sanders is. He's an old school, you know. New Deal idea kind of guy. That's that that's who, who he would uh, resemble, right? Uh, FDR. But there's the smear right there for you. We have a nation which prides itself on a lot of political rights. In other words, under the Constitution, thank God you have freedom of speech. Media can do its thing, even though Trump calls you an enemy of the people. How does that feel to be an enemy? That's another story. All right. <laughs> I won't question... Well, uh, you don't think we are, though? No, I don't. Okay. I certainly do not. 
no, you are the CNN is the enemy of the people. It's a, it's a, uh, of course, it's a, it's a fucking propaganda machine, right? So, Sanders loses points there. You lose, you lose minus five, Bernie. CNN apologist. All right, we'll put that on your list. Let's go to uh, RussiaGate. This is really good stuff right here. Right, he defends, he defends RussiaGate. This is, I, in my view, I've said that RussiaGate immigration and uh, what was the other one that I talked about? The the three points that he has to overcome: RussiaGate, um. The calling Trump a racist and the open border stuff. That's the biggest, that's, I, in my view, that's the biggest obstacle with the, the Trump tried and true that could easily slip into Bernie's column if he were to become the nominee. Uh, but here he fails. Watch Russiagate. Hey, this is a colossal blunder. Welcome back. We're back with Senator Bernie Sanders. Uh, Senator, we have a question from Troy Dante uh, Presswood. He's a community leader here in Washington. Hey, thank Troy. you. Thank you, Senator, for being here. Oh, yes. The intelligence community all agree that Russia tampered with the 2016 election and used information warfare to sow further division and mistrust among Americans. It's likely that they will interfere with the 2020 election as well. So as a candidate, how will you ensure your campaign will not be infiltrated by Russia? And secondly, as president, how will you eliminate this threat once and for all to restore confidence to our electoral process? Okay, so that question is geared towards the gaslighted Americans that watch CNN, right? They've been convinced over the last two years that Russia rigged the election, not the, uh, not, not the Democratic Party and the deep state, the CIA, and, and operatives within the FBI, but that Russia was responsible. And we have mountains of evidence, right? I'm not going to relitigate that here, but mountains of evidence, own admissions in courts of law, that the Democratic Party did, in fact, rig the election. But here we go. A gaslighted individual is asking the question uh, that Russia rigged the election the last time. Are we going to let them ha- let them do it again? Now, what is your response? Trump always has the right response, that it is fake news. It never happened. There's no evidence. Let's see how Bernie Sanders handles it. Thank you very much for that question. Uh, unlike Donald Trump, I have no doubt that what you said is true. <laughs> oh, my God. So, so he has no doubt that the intelligence communities that say that Russia rigged the elections, in fact, it's all true. All right, that's what he just said. And clearly, we have got to make it clear to Russia that they cannot sabotage elections, not only in the United States, by the way, but in countries around the world. Specifically, we are, and I know other campaigns are doing it as well, hiring, spending a lot of money, uh, trying to protect uh, our computers, etc. But ultimately, the word has got to go out to Putin and others around the world that cyber warfare, the attempt to destroy American democracy, is a very, very serious offense, which will not be taken lightly. You know, when you watch something like that, there's also a delay in the video. Uh, There's nothing I could do about it. That's how it was uh, sent out. I'm not delaying right now. It's the video. But it's so it's disgrace it's a, it's disgraceful when you listen to something like that when you've been paying attention for a long time uh, you know that the election was rigged against Bernie and here he is refusing to admit that uh, the Democrats you know stuck a knife in his back and that he took two 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 hundred and forty million dollars from his uh, you know supporters. And, um, you know, and that there's no, he's not, he's not coming clean with it, is the point. Right? So Bernie Sanders fails miserably on, on Russiagate, right? He's just going to keep perpetrating the, the fraud and uh, abuse. So when they cheat him again, he's going to say Russia did it. No. And I was, as active as I could, trying to keep the United States from going to war in Iraq. I was in the Congress does. at that point. Clarify. And I am very fearful of the United States continuing to do what it has done in the past. As you know, or may know, the United States overthrew a democratically elected government in Chile and in Brazil 
and in Guatemala and in other countries around the world. So as someone who fervently believes in human rights and democracy, we have got to do everything that we can. But I think sometimes you have unintended consequences when a powerful nation goes in and tells people uh, who their government will be. So my view is that whether it is Saudi Arabia, which is a despotic regime, or whether it is Venezuela, I think we have got to do everything that we can to create a democratic climate. But I do not believe in U.S. military intervention in those countries. Why have you, Senator, why have you stopped short of calling Maduro of Venezuela a dictator? Here's, here's where they try to, here's where Wolf Blitz tries to stick a knife in his back. Watch. Well, he, I, I think it's, it's fair to say that the last election was undemocratic. Uh, but there are still democratic operations taking place in that country. The point is, what I am calling for right now is uh, internationally supervised free elections. It's a mistake, right? Because if you have, if you call for new elections, what will happen is that Maduro will get reelected, right? Unless the U.S. tries to rig the, their elections, which they probably will. We'll, they, we rig our elections. We're not going to go down there and rig their elections for, to, to, to capture the largest oil reserve in the world, of course. So, so Bernie, he's, he's wrong on this part of it, right? He's wrong. Just leave them alone. Give, let the humanitarian aid that's coming in from other places other than the United States get in there. And, and don't worry about it. He's not, is Maduro a dictator? He's going to try to press him on, on the, 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 the definition of a dictator? It's stupid. And I do find it interesting that Trump is very concerned about what goes on in Venezuela. But what about the last election that took place in Saudi Arabia? Oh, there wasn't any election in Saudi Arabia. Oh, women are treated as third class citizens. So I find it interesting that Trump is kind of selective as to where he is concerned about democracy. My record is to be concerned about democracy all over the world. So we've got to do everything we can. But at the end of the day, it's going to be the people of Venezuela who determine the future of their country, not the United States of America. As you know, uh, President... So he, he, again, he, he says he defends free elections in Venezuela, but then he blames Russia for stealing his election. It's just, it's just ridiculous. It's a totally, totally ridiculous. It makes, you, it makes you believe that there's no way on earth this idiot can get elected. Right? And, I, you know... It just, it just, that's what it seems like. So let's talk about the wall. Uh, in this country. So the goal with immigration, in my view, is to finally deal with comprehensive immigration reform and a path toward citizenship and a humane policy at the border for those who seek asylum. America should not be the country which grabs little children at the border out of the arms of their mothers. That is not what this country is about. So absolutely, he said no wall and uh, earlier and absolutely no change whatsoever. In fact, he'll be more lenient on letting immigrants in. So it's not, there's where he fails. Uh, Russiagate, uh, the immigration, his immigration policy is now out of sync uh, with the middle of the country. And most people, not in the middle of the country, most people not don't agree with a wall, but they agree with some sort of enforcement of immigration law, which we don't have. Uh, we haven't had in a long time, and we probably never will have. With you know, if Trump if Trump gets another four years, we may have some movement in that direction. But essentially, Bernie fails on on immigration uh, on the wall thing, and immigration. That was a, another point. Oh, here's the. The point he makes on re retribution. This is good. This is a final point. And then uh, wrap it up. So, From uh, Chioma Iwaha, she works at a nonprofit Watch here in this Washington. Question. Thank you, Senator Sanders. Part of the legacy of slavery and Jim Crow in the U.S. is the legacy of income inequality in the U.S. What is your position on reparations to the descendants of slaves? Well, as I just indicated, there are massive disparities uh, that... The question is reparation to slaves. What, that, what does that mean? It means paying anybody, any descendant of a slave, paying them 
whether it's unclear, paying them money, paying them land, giving them stuff, not just welfare, right, which they already have, right, but giving them something more, which is, it's un unclear, but listen. Must be addressed. Uh, there is legislation that I like introduced uh, by Congressman Jim Clyburn. It's called the 102030 legislation, which focuses federal resources in a very significant way on distressed communities, communities that have high levels of poverty. So as I've just indicated, you know, I think we have to do everything that we can to end institutional racism in this country. It is not acceptable to me that the rate of childhood poverty among the African-American community is over 30%. He, he dodges the question. In this country, that is beyond belief that African-Americans die from cancer at higher rates than whites. So we're gonna do everything we can to put resources into distressed communities and improve lives for those people who have been hurt from the legacy of slavery. So what is your position specifically on reparations? I asked the question because Elizabeth Warren, Julian Castro, they've indicated they, they well, want to support. What does that support. mean? What do they mean? The I'm not sure that anyone's very clear. What I've just said is that I think we must do everything that we can to address the massive level of disparity that exists in this country. I'll tell you what they mean, because Elizabeth Warren has said black families have had a much steeper hill to climb. We need systematic structural changes to address that. Julian Castro has said, well, I have I just... long thought that this country would be better off if we did find a way to do that. Reparations. Well, I just, I agree with what Elizabeth said. So I mean, you, would support, you would support well, reparations? But read what she said. What does that mean? She means, I think, I don't want to put words into her mouth, is what I said. Okay? In other words, as a result of the legacy of slavery, you have massive levels of inequality. It has to be addressed, and it has to be addressed now. So there's no there's no indication there that Bernie Sanders, the the whole thing again, it's a pitch to to the to the ignorant blacks, for lack of a better term, right? That they're going to get something for free, free money from because our descendants were slaves, right? That's the pitch from the left. Now is Bernie Sanders going along with that pitch? Not really. He he clarified. He said he's for you know. Uh, I, I don't even know what he said, but it's it's stupid. He's not saying give money to the fucking slaves, slave descendants. That's what he didn't say. We're clear on that. He didn't say give money and properties and, and the rest of the nonsense to slaves. So that's that's all I got on that one, right? So that was pretty interesting, right? It's a fucking great, great story, man, right? Bernie Sanders. All right, so you, make, you be the judge. I mean, I don't know. I, I say he's... He fails on Russiagate, the fake news. He's still propagating that. He's still calling Russia, uh, Trump a racist and a bigot and a misogynist and all that shit. He clarified on Venezuela. He's, he's, he's for open borders, no change in immigration. There's not a word about uh, the wall or gun control. Uh, there was one little word on, on, on the wall. Where he shines, Green New Deal, Medicare for all. Right, he's one hundred percent correct. Income and wealth inequality, tax evasion, enforce it on the on the billionaires. Free college at city and state universities. So, so it's a mixed bag. It's not two thousand sixteen. There's a lot of a lot of the the issues, the American people's view on the issues have changed in the era of Trump. Now, can can Bernie change and evolve on those issues without? without, uh, you know, pissing off his precious Democrats uh, who are ultimately going to cheat him anyway? Uh, or is he, or are we just going to, well, we should just call it right now, Trump 2020. I don't know. You be the, you be the judge. Marcus Conti reporting.